This video is brought to you by Envato Elements. Hey guys, in this tutorial I'll show you how you can create this walking pants magic trick. I'll show you the process step by step in Adobe After Effects. So let's get started. To create this trick we'll need 3 shots. Everything is shot on a tripod to make it easier. In the first shot just play out your scene and open the wardrobe. The second shot is gonna be the shot of the pants running around or better to say the person running around wearing pants. Make sure that your hands don't appear in front of the pants. Finally we also need to record the inside of the pants. Since the pants are turning around we also need to do the same with our shot of the inside of the pants. Once we have all of this recorded we can start editing. Before we start editing I want to thank to Envato Elements for making this video possible. It's an amazing tool for all creators offering a huge library with tons of creative assets and presets. They offer great stock footage, awesome After Effects and Premiere Pro templates, VFX assets, intros, transitions, motion graphics, as well as sound effects and music. It allows you to download unlimited amount of all these assets just for a single price and you can cancel it anytime. If you are a filmmaker it will definitely save you a lot of time. Make sure to check it out, there is a link in the description down below. Now let's open up After Effects. To start with, place all of the shots on the timeline. First select the shot with the pants and choose the Roto Brush tool. We're gonna mask out just the pants. So draw a selection around the pants and adjust the mask over time when needed. Then freeze the selection. Go back to the main comp and adjust the Roto Brush settings. Also make sure to enable the Use Motion Blur option. Now we've got something that looks like this. Of course the inside part of the pants is missing. So bring in the shot of the inside of the pants and synchronize the shot so that the inside shot matches with the pants when they turn around. Just reduce the opacity so you can see both shots at the same time. Next we need to make the inside shot move with the pants. Now we could animate it all manually, but actually I think it's better to use a bit of tracking. To do this, create a new null object, select the shot you wanna track, in this case the pants, and go to the tracker panel. If you don't see it, you can enable it by going into window in the menu. Hit track motion and move the track point to a spot with good contrast. Then start tracking. We don't need to track the whole shot. Just check if the motion target is our null object and click apply. Next grab the pen tool and create a mask around the inside of the pants. Also animate this mask when the pants turn around. Now scale and position the layer and parent it to the null object. This way it will use the position data from the tracking. The pants inside video is a bit short so go to the beginning, duplicate the layer and freeze it. Sometimes you need to adjust the position scale and rotation of this layer manually so enable animation for these properties and do adjustments when needed. Now it looks like this. Then repeat the same process with other pens. To make the pants walk out of the wardrobe, duplicate the main shot, bring it to the top of the timeline and create a mask around the door.
As our last step, we can add slight shadows on the floor. For this, duplicate the roto layer and move it below the other layers. Now use the fill effect to fill it with black color. Next reposition it and apply fast blur effect. Then reduce the opacity. We also need a shadow on the floor, so duplicate the roto layer one more time and move it below the other layers. You can make the layer 3D and rotate it to match the floor. Then you can use a regular mask or with no layer selected, I created a shape layer around the bottom part of the legs, moved it below our shadow layer and used it as an alpha mat. Next I blurred it out and adjusted the position. Additionally, I added a reflection as well by duplicating the roto layer. Again, I rotated it as a 3D layer, blurred it out, and reduced the opacity. Finally, pre-compose everything, and top it all off with some fake camera movement and color grading. And we are done. If you found this helpful, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.